Alrighty guys, so today we are going to create a Aboriginal dot painting and to get started um, you're going to choose a dinosaur for this project which I think is really fun. So when you draw your dinosaur, you're just going to pick a dinosaur that's um, a really simple shape. You're not going to really think too difficult with this one. You want it to be something really simple that you can um, easily paint. And you want to make sure that as you're drawing it, that you're just worrying about the outer outlines of the dinosaur. You really don't want to worry about um, too many details in the dinosaur's body. So just pick a simple dinosaur and it can be kind of cartoony. It doesn't have to be like a real um, real dinosaur uh, painting or picture. It can be real simple. Okay. Do some scales on this guy. So I'm just doing a really simple pencil drawing. And we're using a brown paper because um, a lot of Aboriginal art is on either brown or black um, paper. So that's why we're choosing that. Oh, I need my eyeball. Okay, so I've got a really simple dinosaur shape here, okay? <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we're going to create this dot painting. We have here um, a couple of paints. Um, these are my um, tempera paints. There's my warm colors on one side and cool colors on the other and then white in the center. I also have some paper towels here for wiping off my tools. Then I have some tools. We're going to use um, a pencil to um, actually make dots on our artwork. We're going to use the end of the pencil and these are erasers that haven't been messed with a whole lot so the erasers actually look pretty good. Um, then I also have these uh, paint brushes and we're not going to use the brush end, we're actually going to use just the other end for making dots, actually smaller dots on our artwork. Okay, So what you're going to start with is um, actually making the outline of your dinosaur. So you need to pick a color that you want um, your dinosaur to be. And I think I'm going to pick some purple. So I'm going to turn this around so you can actually see me dipping. And what you're going to do is just take the dip, the tip of the eraser and just dip it in your paint. So you don't want to end up having too, too much paint. You want to have just enough on there that you can put it on your paper. Okay. Then all you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to put it right next to and on the inside of the outline of your dinosaur. So notice how I got three really good dots and then one not so good dot. So out of one dip, you can get about three good dots. And then after that, they start to kind of, um, part of the dot goes on and then part of it doesn't go on. So you might have to go back every once in a while and fix a dot, which is fine. So you're going to be doing a lot of dipping. So you just got to get, get used to dipping just a little bit. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that your pencil is straight up and down or whatever tool you're using so that the dots are all about the same size. And our dots need to be close to each other, but try not to make them touch. If they do touch, it's not a big deal but we want to try not to because most dot paintings the dots are um, separate from each other you like the music in the background? that music is made with a really cool instrument called a didgeridoo and it's a really really long tube that someone blows air into and it makes a really deep sound, which is really, really cool. So I'm just going right along and outlining my dinosaur first. So I kind of have an area where I can keep inside of. And this is kind of the same as if you were coloring something and you outline it first to make it um, 
an easier space to color inside of and to kind of help yourself know where to keep things inside of so that you keep a, um, a nice piece of art. That's kind of the same idea. So we're just outlining with our dots first. And if you wanted to start with a smaller dot, you could certainly do that. You don't have to do the bigger dots for your outline. You could do the smaller ones. It's totally up to you. And you can change the size of your dots, or you could keep the same size dots for your entire project. Again, that is totally your choice. When you're doing this, be very careful of your hand that you don't accidentally dip it inside of the paint that's already down on the paper because you don't want to mess up a dot because that is it's kind of different than painting. You can't just, you know, brush it in and, or rub it in and make it look okay. You've got to, you, you're going to have a smear and it's going to look funny. You want all these dots to be nice and round and separate from each other. So be real careful with your hand. And notice how if I don't have room to put my hand down, I'm putting my pinky down. That kind of helps me stabilize my hand, which means I'm helping my hand not be all wiggly. Okay, so my dinosaur is outlined. Oops, look, I made some spots. Must have had it on my hand. Oh, well. So I've outlined my dinosaur. So my next choice is I could either uh, fill in with purple or I could fill in with another color. I can fill in with the same size dots or with different dots. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just fill in with purple. And you don't want to just do this randomly. You want to actually kind of have an, uh, an idea of the way and the order in which you're going. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my feet first. And again, you're trying to keep the dots um, close to each other and try not to let them touch, but if they do touch, it's not that big of a deal. You just want to be neat about this. Okay, so now I have my feet filled in. I think I'm going to go fill in my tail next. Again, make sure that your um, tool is standing up tall and not leaning to the side, because if it's leaning to the side, then you're going to end up messing up your dots, and they're going to be different sizes when you want them to all be the same size. And if you end up having little holes like that, you could actually go back in with a smaller tool and fill in those small holes with a smaller dot. Okay, so notice how I'm kind of just going about this in a row each time instead of just randomly putting dots in there because if you just start randomly putting dots, it ends up looking kind of sloppy. So you really want to take your time and go in a row and keep things all together. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there in the background for now, or in the dinosaur for now, just because I want to talk to you a little bit about background, um, and I don't want to take forever for today. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my um, paintbrush, or my paintbrush, my pencil, and all I'm going to do is just take a paper towel and just kind of wipe the, uh, the end of the eraser on there, just to get it cleaned off enough to put it back in the toolbox, okay? So just, um, that's what you're going to use your paper towels for. For the background, you have some choices. You could go in here and draw like some shapes. This is something that um, I've seen a lot of Aboriginal art do before, where they have these shapes with these lines coming out of them.
So what you can do now for your background, I'll just show you what some smaller dots look like so you can see this. Um, you'll do the same sort of thing. You'll um, dip in whatever color you want to use. I think I'm going to use some orange because I think that color will be fun. Now just dip the tip of the brush into the orange so that you don't get too much. And then you'll do the same thing. You'll outline. Okay, so notice again, I got about three good sized dots before the dot, the paint started to fade on me a little bit. And then I had to dip again. I actually kind of like the smaller dots a little better than the bigger dots. It might take longer, but I think it looks really cool. And listen to that didgeridoo music. That's so awesome. Okay, so once you filled it in, you can fill it, or once you've outlined it, you could fill it in with another color if you wanted to, or you could continue with that same color. So I'm just going to go in a circle again around the whole circle and fill in with more orange dots. look really cool. See this kind of painting takes a little bit of time but once you really take your time with it the results are pretty amazing. We're always being very careful not to smear our dots or to touch them with our hands so that we leave them looking beautiful like they are. Wow look at that that's really cool. So then for the lines, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. I'm going to do a different color. I think I'm going to do a little bit of blue. Again, keep your tool standing up tall so that you don't end up um, making different size dots. You want them to all be about the same size. And remember, you can get about three good dots um, on both of your tools before you need to start dipping again and getting more paint. Sometimes you can get four. Just depends on the amount of paint on the end of your tool. Okay, so then for the, um, the background, like all behind all of this space around all the rest of it, what you can do is you can just go and fill it in with another color or, man, I tried to do too many dots there, didn't I? Or you could outline with one color. So I'm going to go around this whole space and then I'll show you what you can do. So we can pretend we've gone all the way around this whole space and then you can actually grab another color so you just wipe off the end of your tool. You could grab another color like say some pink and then you can go in here and follow along the white lines with some pink. And make sort of like a a rainbow of colors, so different colors um, sitting right next to each other. And then you could sort of make a pattern if you wanted. 
can you could go back and do white again and then pink again and then white or you could do another color and then you can fill in your background that way okay now if you um, see how I've done purple in here if I wanted to go back in because maybe there were some spots